Hello, my name is Peyton Miller. This is for Bayes 550 at Xavier University, and my topic for the current issue is developing countries and information technologies. So first I want to start by talking about the past. Just like all things, looking at the past helps us to understand the progression. Um, in particular, technology in itself is an exponential growth rate, uh, which means that it started off slowly, one or two inventions at a time, and since then it has been increasing at an exponential rate of growth. For example, the first computer was invented in 1946, and it was about 1,800 square feet. Now, we have personal computers that have since been invented in 1974, and even cell phones have come out since then, which are way beyond the technology of that. So this is a graph that shows a little bit of that. It starts off with something simple as x-ray, inventing plastic, then moves on to more crude inventions such as the tank, nuclear fission that were used during the world wars, which were a time of necessity. Um, and then there's things invented like the ATM and email, and then the internet comes out in 1990. All of these you see are growing at a much faster rate. It's not a straight line progression. If so, by 2010, we would be just under 2000. Um, output per hour, but we're already over 3,000 as of currently today. This graph is not fully dated until 2020 yet. So for the present, uh, where we are at today, uh, currently there is a computer that performs 442 quadrillion computations per second. Um, I tried to look it up and do the math, and it, this means that this is roughly about 200,000 times faster than your personal computer. I can't even put that into a comparison for you because there's no way to compare that. It's currently in Japan and working on things going towards the coronavirus results and cures and that's such a thing. Also, cell phones have are something that have been madly connected and have been exploding lately and taking over computers in many ways and assuming a lot of their basic um, capabilities and such. Currently, uh, one thing that I want to touch on and highlight for the rest of the presentation is that 59% of the world currently uses internet. Um, more people have access than 59% and are able to go to cities and do so, but 59% of the world, according to many sources, are currently using the internet in some way or another, whether it's through a computer, whether it's through phones, um, anything of that such. Um, the internet is a basic necessity in a lot of places in some way or another, uh, but clearly only 60% of the world uses it. So there are a lot of people out there still in many regions and places across the world that don't. In 2005, we broke the 1 million mark for internet users. Today, it's at currently 4.66. So the internet was invented in 1970, correct? And it took us 35 years to get to 1 billion, and now we're at 4 billion. This is a classic example of exponential growth and how the internet has really boomed and taken off. And to think that's at only 60% of the world. So the next thing I want to talk about as the second part of my presentation is what makes a country developed versus developing. So actually a little bit of background here. Classification is decided by world statistical organizations. And they all kind of come to joint agreements. There's many other formulas and stats that are taken into it to determine what a country is truly listed as. But some of these are GDP, GNI, mortality rate, infant mortality rate, even per purchase power parity. There's a lot of things that go into these. And most of the time they try and use average statistics because these are what we call umbrella stats that take in a bunch of other stats in total. For example, GDP will not just take in gross domestic product, as it says, but it's an average or a ratio, more or less, of what is shipped out, what comes into the country, what is made. It highlights a little bit of that without hitting on exact numbers in a way. Mortality rate is something else that tells us a tale about, you know, life expectancy or even the... Um, the amount of satisfaction someone gets in a life there. You know, this has things to do with healthcare and all sorts of other things. Then once all these are gathered together in a way, all the data is put into various algorithms that'll pump out certain standards and then a line or a limit is set for what is to be coined developed. And they also use the word, in, word industrialized. So a lot of times industrialized goes off more GDP, whereas developed has more to do with life expectancy and mortality rate in total. 
And simply through education, we've simply learned to take a glance um, and kind of estimate on what countries are developed or developing. Like we don't always do exact math to determine that a country in the Middle East would be developed or developing or in South America. You know, a lot of times through hearing about other people, what teachers have told us or reading what we've seen online, we can take an estimated guess about whether a country is developed or developing currently. So developing countries, Africa is the staple for this category because across their board, they remain low on the percentage of people that have access to internet and in many other categories like we just talked about, for example, GDP or mortality rate. Some of these things Africa is not the highest on, and there are many reasons for this, which we'll touch on in a little bit. The Dominican Re Republic of Congo has the most internet users out of any African country, but actually has the one of the lowest percentages because the country is larger with more or less developed areas. For example, in Africa, there are a lot of regions that are untouched wilderness or perfect, purposely kept that way. The Dominican Re Republic of Congo currently has 7 million people, which makes it a lot more than many of the African countries. And unfortunately, most of these people live without internet. So even though it may seem like it has the most on paper, you really have to look at the percentages of countries that have access to internet because this will really tell, tell a much deeper tale. Um, currently, there are 159 countries listed as developing countries. Here we'll look at a map, show us a little bit about it. So on here, the green ones are developing countries. The blue are countries that are more recently developed. And the red one up there is one that is in the process that is in almost an in-between state in a, in a way. So the green, green countries, as we talked about, Africa is one of the staples because of these factors that we talked about and I highlight on what make a country developed and developing. It's interesting to see that all around, um, there are countries all over the place in many nations and regions that are developed versus developing and sometimes they're even bordering each other which is crazy how one border which is simply not even physical but more or less mental or drawn up by governments can affect things like that you see the way europe leads into asia and eurasia in a way this is a clearly defined line between green and gray, which are, are long-standing developed countries, more or less. So next, we're going to talk about the effect of technology. This is how this developing countries and IT sort of meet in the middle. So developing countries suffer from a lack of basic necessities and a lowered ability uh, to complete things that developed countries more or less take for granted. Through technology, you know, things such as the internet, you can just whip up internet searches or you can do simple calculations if you have a calculator. There's a lot of things that we take for granted here. So developing countries, a lot of people say, would be able to move much more quickly if developed countries were to install more advanced technology. So one of the questions that I'm going to pose is, do developing countries need to work through their own process of development? Or could developing countries simply fast track them with the advanced technology? I'm going to leave this for y'all to discuss. There are many sources out there to go through this. So some of the advantages of technology that we're going to touch on are it would allow for better healthcare care um, and for people to access information more quickly. So some of the things are mortality rate. Uh, this would be taken away by better health care like we have here in the United States, for example, instantly at your touch. Uh, you know, ambulances get anywhere very quickly. Most places don't have access to this. Also, access to information would greatly increase education and high school graduation rates, which are taken into effect by develop into the uh, many times the calculations and the formulas for calculating if a country is developed or developing. So technology can also connect people further away. It would also help governments to establish and promote communication. We see this so much in America, especially during the time of the presidential election. There are things going around about each president. And with all of the movements nowadays for equality, it's very easy for people to post on social media and to reach the other group without having conflict or interference. Technology allows us to do this without having to meet in a public place like a parking lot to simply tell someone about some information that we saw. Uh, and with the proper creativity, the Technology simply just creates for more innovation all around. 
with one computer, you can create so many more and do so many more advanced things. It's like a stepping ladder. You have to step on the first step before you can step all the way up. How do you develop, how have developed countries fallen behind and not kept up? First, this is through proper education of the next generation. Here in America, we understand that this is something that will create for a better future for us. The second is through oppression and internal problems. So a lot of times there are countries that do not have governments that are well balanced or have always the best intentions for the people like a democracy. And a lot of places still have slavery and inequalities that go throughout them much, much deeper than the United States has. Third is because of the lack of established businesses. Sometimes FDIs are good for the country to get workers to work, but they do not go back towards the country. If America outsources an FDI into, for example, say South America, the money and the FDI goes back to the GDP of the United States. So this does not actually help the South American country in, a, in any way. Lastly, the gap in development has created an unfair advantage in science, technology, and innovation. These are the three big things that we touch on. And that's why I'm focusing on technology today, because once you're ahead, that progression is exponential like we talked about. And once you're behind, it's just that much harder while other countries use you and keep you under their thumb most of the time. A lot of times, countries have other goals too. This is something that I found online that I did not currently under previously understand before then. Some countries have problems and they choose to focus on achieving those before economic growth. They have to take care of other things like how to run their government correctly in Venezuela before they can start to grow their economy. One example that I found that was very interesting is the country Bhutan, which is right near India, located in Nepal. And for example, they chose to work on life satisfaction and environmental stability. Their life satisfaction was very low. Their life expectancy was one of the lowest. So they, they chose to do this before developing their economy because this would help their people and their satisfaction overall. And one thing that was key to them was environmental stability. They're a beautiful location with mountains, forests, so many different species of animals, that this is something they all really cared about as a government and as a people. So they chose to do this before building factories that would tear down rainforests or other things. They chose this over possibly what we coin as developed. Also, sometimes the size and location of countries doesn't make the traditional route easy for them. Bhutan is not on the coast. It's not a very big country, so they don't have a lot of workers. They don't have any sort of developmental developmental specificity, specificity that they want to go after. So they can't just be importing, exporting, or building certain things because they only have so many people. Also, sometimes countries are not capable of change until other issues are resolved. You can only take on so many challenges at once, so they have to focus on what is most important. So how does this play? into development. For example, IT is more or less the foundation or the building block that allows technology to run smoothly. Like we've talked about in all this class, developing nations would not be able to run smoothly and defend off cyber attacks if advanced technology was simply given to them. They wouldn't even know how to work it. They would have to be taught all over again. They would probably have to take this class. Um, they would also have to do many other things. Like we've talked about in this class, it's, it's not just having the technology, Part of it is getting there and learning how to use it. And that's how they go together. Development and information. IT is one of the building blocks and almost the backbone of this in a way. So in conclusion, technology is the basis for many things today in the world. And developing nations can learn from developed nations on what to do and how to find progress forward. IT is a good way to look because it shows the internal strength and structure of many things and is a great outline for them to use. As always, the past will reflect the future and growth will occur. All it needs is time.